What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another rendition of Truth Be Told. I'm your boy, Thomas, back with another video this week. Uh, nothing too major in the news. You know, the whole impeachment trial's going on, and the, the Democrats are having a heyday, and the judge got on to them, but also the Republicans uh, for no reason. But whatever um, we all know the outcome of it uh, the only other thing I saw that was that kind of caught my eye was uh, Huff Post and you know how Huff Post is their writers are very biased uh, the, the company's very biased uh, very left-wing uh, anyways, they wrote an article saying, talking about uh, a man who killed another man in Florida over a, a political argument at uh, their uh, construction yard or something. They were both construction workers. Uh, one of them was the boss, and he's the one who got killed by the other guy. And they tried to spin it off by labeling him as something else. He was a uh, Democratic liberal. Uh, and they tried to label him as an uh, anti-government guy. You know, that was his political opinion, which isn't the truth. The truth is he was a far leftist. And he killed a pro-Trumper or, or someone who supports Trump. They called him a pro-Trumper. Um, but yeah, everyone knows that, you know, the guy was, uh, you know, far left. And he just went nuts on the guy, which is usually the way the far left usually is. Uh, you know, liberal and democratic extremists. Uh, uh, you gotta be careful. They're nuts. They will lose it and they will kill you. That's just the way they are, you know. Uh, but I thought it kind of funny that, uh, you know, <laughs> the media or the, you know, far left media, HuffPost, uh, try to, you know, label the guy as anti government when he, he was obviously a Democrat and a liberal. Uh, because the thing is, is he, you know, the, tr you know, Trump is anti-government. He's not for the government. He's for the people. So I thought it was funny that they were trying to, you know, he's attacking a, a Trump supporter who's anti-government, uh, and then calling the far extreme leftist, the Democratic liberal. Uh, you know, anti-government, you know. Uh, it's just like calling Antifa uh, anti-government. They're not anti-government, they're fascist. Uh, they try to put down anyone else's political views, you know. Uh, that's what the way the extreme left are. They, they try to uh, stop anyone else's political views or opinions on politics. They're just not going to have it. They're, they're not tolerant at all. Anyways, I just figured I'd mention in that story. It was just kind of funny. I saw that. Had to say something about it. Um, let's get on to a couple of things that I saw uh, recently before we get on to your B-movie reviews. Um, I saw that their Netflix has gone and made uh, a, I guess you would call it a reboot, but they went and made their own version of High Fidelity. This is a movie that starred John Cusack, who owned a record store. Uh, well, they've gone and gender swapped and made it some young girl, Mexican, I, I think she's Mexican, she's dark skinned, or, or brown, so, uh, she may be black, I don't know, maybe Indian, I don't know, but 
Anyway, they've gone and gender swapped and made it a girl. And, and like anyone really asked for this reboot, nobody cares. Uh, the original High Fidelity was a great movie. Uh, they didn't need to do a reboot of it, so I it just looks stupid. But you know, and that's not the only thing that they're doing a gender swap with. Apparently, they're going to make a Save by the Bell movie. I think it's a movie, not it may be a television series. I don't know. I, I think they're doing a movie, not a series. I may be wrong on that. But I did see that they were going to make a Saved by the Bell reboot. Again, no one asked for this reboot. Nobody cares. Uh, you know, a lot, it was popular for a while with the teeny boppers back in the 90s. You know, and just leave it at that. Nobody wants a reboot of Saved by the Bell. Uh, and nobody definitely didn't ask for it. But again... Uh, the character Screech, the nerd, uh, they went ahead and decided that they're going to do a gender swap with him and the main character, Zack, they're going to do a gender swap with him as well. And they're turning them both into females. Now, all I got to say about that is I'm really tired, like everybody else, I'm tired of the PC crap and the gender swapping. You know, if you want a female lead a role in a movie, then do make your own, create your own story. Don't do somebody else's story and then try to put your stamp on it. It's retarded. Uh, and that's why all, all this feminist shows and and the alphabet community shows, they're all failing because they keep taking other people's create creative stories and then just swapping out characters and putting their own characters in, which you can't do. It doesn't work. It fails every time. Because people are sick of it. Nobody wants to see that shit. Uh, okay, enough of that. I also, uh, you know, I wouldn't even mind hearing some of your own thoughts out there about this new Saved by, by the Bell or High Fidelity. Did you? Uh, did anyone else ask for this? I don't think so. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, next thing I'm going to talk about is I, I had a lot of people coming up to me and saying, hey, Tom, you need to check out this movie called Bright with Will Smith. It was on a Netflix thing. I was like, all right. So I finally got around to checking that out. Um, it was all right. It wasn't bad. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, I really didn't bother watching it because I just thought, oh, that's going to be cheesy as hell. But actually, it wasn't really all that bad. Uh, now, they could do a little work on the elves. Uh, the elves didn't really look like elves to me. So, that looked all kind of cheesy. Uh, but everybody else was fine. However, there are two things about the movie that got to me. The first thing was... You knew, as soon as they mentioned, uh, like three quarters of the way into the movie, uh, Will Smith's character and this other, the orc that he's with, they mentioned something about being, they might be in some prophecy that they don't know about. And absolutely, as soon as they said that, I knew that that's actually what's going on. They're in this prophecy and they don't even realize it. Because uh, the orc, you know, he's trying to be like king of the orcs or some crap like that. Uh, they call it a blood thing or whatever. But he wants to belong to the orcs because nobody cares for him. And he gets that and all the orcs are now supporting him. Blah, blah, blah. They think he's great towards the end of the movie. And then I knew, I knew 
spoiler alert, I knew as soon as Will Smith grabbed that wand at the end, it wasn't going to kill him. I knew he was a bright. I mean, it was just obvious throughout the whole movie. I knew, I, I kept saying that he's a bright, you know, I guarantee it. Sure enough, that's what he was. He was a bright. Brights are, you know, someone who can handle magical wands. Uh, most generally, if you're not a bright, it will kill you. Uh, but I knew he was. I knew he was a bright. I just saw it coming. Uh, one thing I did find interesting about the movie is they kept mentioning about some type of war that had happened previously with uh, this entity called they're calling the Dark Lord or some crap. Uh, where all the races had to get together and defeat him or some crap. Even in the end, the orcs had to help. Whereas at the beginning, they were with the Dark Lord. Uh, that's why they're kind of shunned by society. Nobody really cares for the orcs. Even though they turned sides and helped everybody else out and defeat the Dark Lord. Um... I was kind of interested in the backstory of that. I, I wish they'd show more of that. How everything came to be the way it was. I think they should have started it out that way instead of starting it out as they did. But, you know, even though then, it, Bright's not a bad movie. Check it out. It's alright. It's not bad. Uh, another movie I just recently watched uh, that just re recently came out is called Midway. Now this has been done like two or three times before, uh, so this is just a newer version of it. I did not recognize any of the young men in this movie, uh, or the young women. I didn't recognize any of them. I had no idea who any of these people were, except for one. Uh, I don't know his name, but the guy that plays Bryn on Vikings was in this. He had a short role at the very beginning of the movie as a lieutenant or something on a ship. He's the only one I recognize. None of the others I recognize. Now, I recognize several of the older actors like Woody Harrelson and Dennis Quaid and all them, but like I said, I didn't recognize any of the older or younger guys. Um, it was all right. It uh, wasn't bad, but it wasn't... I don't think it was like super great or anything. It was just worth a watch. Uh, go ahead and check it out. It's not a bad movie. Uh, Alright, let's get on to your B-movie review. Alright, movie holics, we're moving on to your B-movie reviews now. Let's see. This week, we're back to action week. Back to doing action flicks. Now, I've been going through the Death Wish series uh, I, I, I'm not going to do a review on the, the latest one, the new one with Bruce Willis. You know, it was, it was alright. It was a good action flick, you know. Go ahead and check it out if you want. Uh, but I've been reviewing all the older ones uh, with Charles Bronson. And I, I just recently watched the fifth one. I chose to watch the fifth one. Uh, it was done 1994. Only made about two million, so it didn't really do all that great uh, at the box office. Uh, of course, it starred Charles Bronson. Uh, Leslie Ann Don was the uh, leading lady, and then Michael Parks. You probably might have seen or know of him. He was the the villain in this. This actually wasn't all that bad. It was okay for uh, an action flick for a good watch, you know. Basically, Charles Bronson runs into a woman and gets in a relationship with her. Uh, and come to find out, she used to be, or she's an ex-wife of uh, kind of a Irish drug pin or drug lord. Uh, 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 she has a daughter by him as well. Uh, anyways, uh, they witness him killing somebody or causing trouble. And he's giving her trouble with her business. She's like a fashion designer. 
and uh, he's trying to launder money through her fashion design business. So he's giving her a lot of hassle. And he keeps giving her crap about taking her daughter away from him. Uh, even though he knows, you know, he's a drug lord and everything. Uh, everybody knows he's a drug lord, even the police. Uh, but somehow he always manages to find a way out of it. You know, with lawyers and money and bribing police. Well, he ends up killing the ex-wife, which sets Charles Bronson off. Uh, and then he ends up basically taking the daughter away, uh, which Charles Bronson was taking care of. Uh, so Charles Bronson starts doing some investigative work on him, and then the cops come around to him and tell him, you know, hopefully he's not back to his old ways, blah, blah, blah. But of course he does. He goes back to being a vigilante. And he goes in up and he basically kills all the mob guys, including the boss, and takes the daughter back. And that's pretty much the end of the movie. That's the gist of the movie. Like I said, that's not a bad action flick. It's okay for, you know, one-time watch, you know, just, you know, something to past the time with you know I give it two thumbs up it wasn't bad at all uh, decent uh, the next uh, action flick I watched was called uh, the big brawl uh, it's also known as Battle Creek Brawl uh, it was done in 1980 uh, it made about 8 mil, so back then that wasn't actually that half that bad. It didn't do great at the box office, but it didn't do like horrible either. This starred Jackie Chan. It's a Jackie Chan flick. In fact, it is his first time he did a movie over here or, you know, associated with Hong Kong or whatever. We tried to break into the American Hollywood industry our market. Uh, the leading lady in this was Kristen D. Bell. She was his girlfriend in the movie. Basically, <laughs> his father doesn't want him to fight, but he keeps going hanging out with his uncle who's teaching him how to fight. Uh, his father wants him to take over a restaurant business. Uh, he was supposed to go in and get his doctorate like his brother. He has a brother who becomes a doctor. He was supposed to kind of follow in his footsteps and he didn't do it. Uh, he preferred to learn how to uh, uh, become a Kung Fu master like his uncle. So, uh, at some point in time in the movie, these uh, it's done in the 1930s, and these guys are like Italian mobsters or whatever. Anyway, they're going around the neighborhood, including his uh, uh, father's restaurant. You know, the old, uh, hey, you pay us for protection in the neighborhood gag or whatever. So they're taking money from all the uh, businesses around. Uh, there, there's two two mob bosses, and they both are into uh, illegal fights, uh, you know, illegal tournament fights or whatever. Uh, anyway, his brother has uh, a woman coming from China who's supposed to show up and marry him. Uh, and he asked Jackie to go get him, or go pick her up at the train station, I think it's train station, or airport, I don't, I, no, it's not an airport, it's train station, asked him to go get, pick her up at the train station, keep, 
I keep forgetting this 1930s. A lot of the, a lot of it didn't look 1930s, but uh, you know they tried to make it look that way. Uh, like some of the suits and stuff. Like the whole, there's a whole scene where they're skating on roller skates. And, you know, if you look at the roller skates, you can tell that's like 70s roller skates. That wasn't roller skates in the 1930s. Nowhere near looked like that. Uh, including the jumpsuits they were wearing. That definitely wasn't 1930s either. But anyways, uh, he's supposed to go pick up his brother's fiance at the train station. The mob guy's kidnap the fiance and tell Jackie if he doesn't fight for him uh, something bad will happen to the girl so now he feels obligated to go fight at this fight well they give him another woman because his brother's never seen his fiance so they give him another woman that's supposed to pretend to be the fiance so he takes her to him and then he goes to fight in this fight. Well, then they, uh, the other mob guys, they decide to kidnap his uncle and try to force Jackie to throw the fight in the last fight. Uh, but his uncle breaks free and he sees his uncle and his uncle tells him he's okay. And so then he proceeds to beat the crap out of the main guy uh, at the tournament. Um... However, the mob guys, for uh, the ones who try to steal his uncle, they try to kill him. He ends up beating the holy piss out of them. Then he comes out and he beats the holy piss out of the last guy. And and that's pretty much, it ends pretty much right there. I mean, the, the other mob guy stole the fiance, or kidnapped the fiance. He tries to yell to him, everything will be fine once you get back to Chicago or whatever, blah, 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 wherever they're from. And he's like, okay, and that's the end of the movie. You don't even see him get the fiancé back or, you know, any of that other crap, you know, the fake fiancé and all that. That's kind of a weird ending the way they ended it. But it's okay. I, it wasn't really all that great. To be honest, I mean, the acting was fine and everything, but I don't know. It just kind of seemed off. I mean, it was okay for a watch. I get, I give it a thumbs up, thumbs down, because it wasn't really all that great. It was just so, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, anyways, check it out if you want to. More power to you. And that's pretty much the end of what I got for you this week. Uh, if you have any suggestions of some gems of movies, uh, B-rated movies I might have missed or, you know, you think I might have missed, go ahead and leave your suggestions down in the comments below and I'll try to get down or get around to reviewing them as soon as I can. Uh, that's it for now. I'll see you next week. Uh, you know, I told you you'd be told the truth, and you've just been told.